interested in personal development, health, being black in the 21st century, love and relationship, the subconscious mind, wealth creation, black history and so much more. The information, extend the knowledge. That's the information, extend the knowledge. John Coltrane said, I love Supreme. I interpret that to all living things. Donnie Hathaway said, The ghetto. Woody Shaw said, why? John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for you. Pass the information. Extend the knowledge. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. TV Wonder said, Inner Visions, Interpretation, Watch with your ears. Aretha Franklin said, Respect. Barry White said, Love. Nina Simone said, To be young, gifted, and James Brown said, stay in school. Cannonball Avenue said, sometimes we're not prepared for adversity. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Oliver Nelson said, stolen moments. Isley Brothers said, harvest for the world. I know there can be Extend the knowledge That's the information Extend the knowledge That's the information Rodney Franklin says you'll never know People all said Say it was sight Maxie Wilson said, guess who I saw today? Earth, wind, and fire said, keep your head to the sky. I know there is a force far wiser than I. The creator has a master plan. From the pen of Leon Thomas and Farrell Sanders. Alex Haley said, roots. Carol Wilson said, you better believe it. Charlie Parker said, now is the time. Wake up! Billy Holiday said, God bless the child. LTD said, love, togetherness, and devotion. Bobby Bland said, as soon as the weather breaks, Sam Cook said, you sing this. Raw Air says, believe in yourself. Bill Scott Heron said, winter in America. Hugh <laughs> Massagela said, grazing in the grass. Richard Pryor said, how long? How long will it take for us to become one? How long will it take for us to become unified? How long will it take us to understand? meaning of understanding. How long will it take us to do what we have to do that is most important? How long will it take our priorities to oversee? How long is how long it will take us? We must see beyond the eyes. Focus in and pursue. Agarida la mon colimbo. 
Ogera njogera umweru takira mudu gavu Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Naka mwante tagenze kumbugo kundopa Tsena kolantia Agali rala mungkoli mbo Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Oko gira njo gire nsue yo gira noru endo Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Agali rala mungkoli mbo Oko gira njo gira umweru takira mudu gavu Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Agali rala Agali rala mungkoli mbo Hi, um, Imani is back in the Nubia house, um, Imani Speaks, and I'm so glad to be here with you again, um, uh, my listening audience, and as I promised, I have got a guest for you, and um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different than what I've done for the last few weeks. It's, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different from what I've done in the last few weeks, but um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. We're going to have some live music for you and some, you know, music in general as well. Um, but really what I want to do is really just sort of um, have us embrace, you know, sort of jazz and, and remember that that's one of our genres of music as well, because I think it's a, it's a beautiful um, genre of music and I just really wanted us to kind of celebrate it today. So I hope you're going to enjoy that and we're going to have some lovely sounds, um, African sounds uh, and songs in the, in the background as well as we talk through the show. So um, I, as usual, I want you to be interactive and be part of the show. So please text in on 07-580-183483. That's 07-580-183483. Um, you can also email at newbiahouseradio at gmail.com. That's newbiahouseradio at gmail.com. So, um, my special guest is here and ready and rearing to go. And um, before he plays, we're going to just, I'm just going to introduce him. And his CV is very long, but today we're going to be concentrating on his, he's a musician and he's also a filmmaker. And we're going to talk about some of his work and um, we really just, you know, just bring him to the show and um, let him sh let him shine. Um, he's a lovely spirit. I'm sure you will love him. Um, and um, yes, so I'm just going to I'm going to introduce him right now. So here goes. Um, hi, Henry. Hi. And how are you? I'm really glad to have you on the show. I'm really appreciative to be here mm -hmm. tonight. Great, and, uh, great. Looking forward. Great, yeah. I'm looking forward to it too. So, Henry, what I'd like you to do, um, my listening audience would like to, you know, know a bit about you. Yes. So I wondered if well, you uh, would do the honours of. Uh, <laughs> with, with pleasure. My name is Henry Kwaku Knudsen, uh, and you heard the word Kwaku. That is because I'm born on a Wednesday in Ghana. I am uh, from a mixed background. I have mm -hmm. a Ghanaian mother. Uh, called from the clan Uwari in the Ashanti region of Ghana and I have a Danish English father and um, yes I mean the background I mean born in Ghana 1961 and I spent the first two years of my life in Ghana and then I moved to Denmark because I have a Danish English father I have an English grandmother so that's also one of the connections to the UK here but I born in Africa born in the Ashanti region in a town called Agogo oh, 1961 right. and mm -hmm. uh, you see my father went to, to Ghana in the 1950s when he was still a British colony oh, and right. worked as a doctor there right. and then met my mother there mm -hmm. and then teamed up with her oh, in, in, okay. the, in the mid 50s mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of three I'm the last of three children oh, right. okay. I have an older brother 
brother mm-hmm. who's a, called Eric. He's a filmmaker, oh, professor right, okay. at Salford University in Manchester. Okay. And yeah. I have a sister Mary who lives in Denmark, mm-hmm. who's a, a plastic surgeon. And then I'm number three, <laughs> artist. Filmmaker, musician, spiritualist, uh, mm, healer, and mm, uh, well, mm. work also with the psychological element of things. Oh, but I mean, the, the story is long. I came to Denmark in the early 60s, and, and of course, I was a child, and it was a completely different t- time because my mother, as a young African woman, came to a continent which was just like coming to another planet. It, it was <laughs> long before the internet, before you have multi televisions and even telephones. So to travel that far in those days was a much, much bigger event. Very brave of her, yeah, and my it? mother had really took a huge life challenge mm-hmm. to come to Europe mm-hmm. uh, when she was a young woman at that time. Right. Well, mm-hmm. she was more or less maybe the late 20s, around the age of 30. And 1960s Denmark, of course, I'm, I'm growing up at the age of, what, two, three, four, five years old. Mm-hmm. So, of course, my memories, of course, you, you know, when you get three or four, then you can have flashback memories to your of childhood. Course, yes. I grew up in a Danish society where there was absolutely no other African or mixed-race children mm. to be seen anywhere. Wow. So, of course, that consciousness was endowed into me at a very early age. You couldn't avoid it because I was in a school mm. where we, me and my siblings, would be the only, so you were the only different only looking I mean everybody's different looking if, in some yeah, sense but yeah. sort of ethnically looking mm-hmm, children. Mm-hmm. And of course that is the starting note of this conversation mm-hmm, about mm-hmm. how it was to be of a mixed culture, mixed race mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in a European society. Mm-hmm. And this is not like, if I go back to De- Denmark is sort of my, my fatherland. Mm-hmm. But today Denmark is like, you go to Copenhagen, it's full of ethnic people. Right, And right. lots of mixed so race changed children. A lot oh, dramatically. Okay. We were there in the 1960s, in the early mm-hmm. days, we were alone. And of course, uh, when I look back, all these things that have been presented along the life path has have made you in your mind and your psyche and how you behave. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, when you're different, there's two things. You can feel very isolated and lonely and you will be sent on a life journey of aliens of time where you will be looking for certain identities. Now, that's a longer talk. Mm-hmm. At the same time, of course, you're also special. If I look back in the 1960s in Denmark, and you get to see the big picture of things, yeah, I would imagine. It's like, yeah. if you say, okay, if you were, if you were different, then you, you'd be bullied and this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I remember the 1960s in my schooling in Denmark as a, a, a happy time. I have tons of good friends. I was treated well, mm-hmm. popular. Mm-hmm. And, of course, yeah, being different, that. I think, it, it, it's like night and day. It can be feel like a curse, mm-hmm. and at the same time, if you're special, you're special, you're different. Did it I, also, would you say, bring out more of your, did you find that you had to bring out more of yourself, you know, bring out, and, and be more tolerant because... You, you know what, I think a lifetime of patterns have been laid where mm-hmm. if you are different and you're always being looked at mm-hmm. physically, mm-hmm. if you walk in on the street, people are going to note you. Mm. If you walk into somewhere, everybody's going to look at you. It creates also that you have to create a lot more masks. Facades. Ah, you always have to sounds. behave properly, mm-hmm. or you don't want to tread out because you're already exposed. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're just a kid from the neighborhood, you can become maybe more cheeky, or you can become more extreme because mm-hmm. you want attention. Mm-hmm. Here, you're trying to go the other way. Right. You're constantly being inundated by 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 people looking at you. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's negative. People just look at you because you're different, mm-hmm. or they've never ever seen a dark person, or an African person, <laughs> yes. or a black person. Yeah. So therefore, you're different. So I think the reverse mechanism is to actually want to maybe to hide a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And that is a very, very deep talk, what it does to you. Okay. It's, but then again, everybody carries their cross spiritually mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. life. Of course. These are the cards dealt, and at the end of the day, they're your blessing. Well, this is it. You have to make what, you know, you have to take challenges. And this, this is what this show is about. It is about, you know, taking adversity, yeah. taking challenges and turning them into, you know, it's like lead into gold. Exactly. You know, you take what you've, yeah. you know, what and you've it's bet, and, what it's you've and, and it's, uh, you can be quite sure in my universe, mm-hmm. it is a spiritual incarnational thing. You'll mm-hmm. be presented by things that you have to grow on. So right. what the issues are, now, that's a longer talk why you, mm. you, you were born into that situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just coming down to earth, uh, how do you face that? As I say, of course you, you'll be inundated by oceans of different personality things that make you move in an environment to be smooth and be, to be as little painful as possible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't mean reducing your 
persona or who you are and your character. Right. But it does affect the way you carry yourself of maybe having to be nice. Mm. Because you don't want to already under ex- ex- extreme exposure right. want to be seen putting yourself even more into the spotlight mm-hmm. because you could be shy. Am I when I ever look back at my childhood maybe I think, well I was shy. Doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't come across like that person. now. <laughs> no, but as a, as a, as a sensitive person, yeah. but then again, your personality mm. and the strength of it is also developed in advis- adversity. Can I just ask you, Henry, do you feel that your chosen, um, you know, the thing you, the, in terms of music and all these, you're, very, you're a very creative man, aren't you? And do you feel that that sort of helped you to deal with some of these issues? Do you feel that it was a way for you to express uh, yourself? Of course. In a more, very, you know, expressive I mean, way where yeah, you had to sort of... I think so. Yeah. I, I think it's a universal thing with the human being. If mm-hmm. you're sensitive, then you're looking for your medium to find your spot in this world. Right. How can I exist in this world, mm-hmm. in a quite harsh world, mm-hmm. material world? Mm-hmm. How can I uh, How can I harness my feelings? How can I find a home to be? That's where we seek art. I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about the human being in its nature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I play music instruments. Mm-hmm. I write. I draw. I do different things. Because you, you play several instruments. Don't yeah, you? I play. I play. The, I've got to hear in my hand. <laughs> the I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to playing. Okay. I play the clarinet, which I I love divinely. Mm-hmm. I, I, I play guitar. And I play piano, but my main instrument is my saxophone. Mm. I am uh, really in these periods working very hard to develop my guitar playing and my my piano playing because there's other things that come out of, let's say, these embodiments. I see I see the saxophone as an expression of my soul. Mm. I see uh, the guitar as the expression of the god Mars, the conquest in male god, and I see Mother Earth as the piano. Because okay. she is very rooted and heavy and grounded, mm. and the piano is the embodiment, I think, of many things in composition and in musical way of, of Yeah, the piano it, is yeah. just. Oh, you can sit at the piano, and you, your hands can rest. The piano is is everything. It's melodic, and it's also a rhythm instrument. If you're into drumming, just play on the piano because it's a rhythm instrument mm, too. Mm, so you mm. just sit at the piano, knocking out chords and keeping on rhythms, whether it's a reggae rhythm or as an Af- different kind of Afro rhythms or jazz right, rhythms, right. just playing rhythm. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to play some fancy melody. Mm-hmm. Just playing a rhythm is satisfying just because it's very basic in the human soul, playing drums, like back yeah, to African very, culture. That is very healing, isn't it? Very it's, healing, um, just playing rhythms. Yeah, of yeah. course, the piano, when you're playing several things, you're playing harmonies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, that is an endless tale of what harmonies do up because uh, as I've gotten old, it's only in recent years I've really started upping my game on mm-hmm. playing piano. Mm-hmm because I'm thinking also more on a compositional layer as a composer. If you want to write songs, but not only that, if you just want to work with sound, mm. themes, if you want to work with like scores for films or for television right. or for theater, right. I mean, uh, the piano is probably the best composition. Mm. I mean, this is a subjective Because you, view, you have to work out in, in a film setting, say, what you want people to feel in Exactly, in I mean, there's scene. nothing. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I look at composition and I look at movies or even television, mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. I look at the greatest art being made in many ways in music is, is by these people. But the people working in film composition score are really, really super professional Mm -hmm. and they know their classical world Mm -hmm. you want to work in that world you better learn your scales and your because it's about sound effect and emotion yes many musicians can play but can you consciously seek i'm going to play a b minor chord i'm going to play a d minor chord to give these effect worlds and that is not something you have to sit there thousands of hours to know your classical universes Mm. and i'm on my way i'm not complete I am in an endless process of learning. Because I've heard you have to, um, I think, to become a master of anything. Ten, is it 10,000 hours? 10,000 hours? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, you, uh, uh, you're mentioning it now. I've heard that figure too, and I was mm. discussing it with a, a musician friend, the guy I actually called earlier. Oh, right. We had a discussion two weeks ago. Yeah. Now, that is a figure. I remember my friend who talked to me, the one who called earlier on, he's saying, that's the same as playing 10 hours a day for three years, non-stop, seven days a week. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, yeah, I, I can see in my daily life, I'm really not doing that. But, you know, I have great, I, I do play several hours, uh, several hours, I don't know. I play four, five, six hours a day, seven hours a day. I really like that because it is a numbers game. Mm. Of course, there is talent. But Mozart said, 5% talent, 95% hard work. And that's just a fact because music you can't get away it, from hard work. No, because no when you say yeah. play music, maybe people can get an interpretation. That's fun as a hobby. That's easy life. 
I'll tell you something, it is brutal, physical, hard work. Mm -hmm. To play a saxophone for hours, blowing and blowing, it is heaven in many ways, but it's Sounds so, physical, yeah. it's like being an athlete. Yeah, You're really working your lungs, our, your mm -hmm. fingers, mm -hmm. uh, working, reading scales, working with your fingering, uh, expressing, mm -hmm. I mean, because you might be playing music, but uh, is your heart open at every given time of the mm -hmm. day? to be full of poetry and romance all day long? No. So it's also the, all the hours where you're not inspired or you just feel like, but, and then you say, okay, the more you've done it, of mm -hmm. course, it's like, it's like, it's like a, a viral infection. It's just, I mean, I can't even know when things start to stop in my life. Yeah. If I pick up an instrument, I don't sing and say, what it's like not to play a musical instrument because that's another planet. I just know this is something that's in me and I do know many many worlds that I, I explore with instrument because let's say a saxophone instrument mm. you're working with breath now breath is everything from deep yoga practice meditation mm. Mm. spiritual devotion I know you're quite you're very much into yoga yes, and I'm very much yeah. into yoga yeah. and, and meditation and for me the worlds are parallel universe I mean when when it's best playing a wind instrument you are connecting with very, very, very profound things in your brain. Okay. Yeah. I've, what that's I was going to say, discussion. I'm going to say, yeah, because there's so much that I know you're going to touch on, but I just want you to kind of just, just play something for for the listeners yeah, now. So, well, um, are you are you ready? Do you need to get prepared? No, I'll just I'm, press the button here, and you know let what? Let me I'm, just, yeah. When I'll you're, romance you with something here. Or, um, as I say, I'm a, I'm a devout lover of jazz. I'm not. I'm, I love all kinds of music. Yeah, I mean, me too, everything. Me I like. Too, yeah. Pop, soul, R&B, Afro, uh, Afro Latin. I like Brazilian jazz, uh, American jazz, okay. in all its shape. Yeah, yeah, there's so much glorious music. I like Oriental music. I like Gypsy music and, and Indian music too, and Arabic music. Okay. I, I can play all of them. Okay. But of course, there's certain worlds that you you move in. That that's got to do where you live and who you're moving mm. with. But okay, I predominantly. If, if you ask me what I play mostly, mm -hmm. I would say I put on jazz music and can that's I just, what I play. Before you play, can you just um, tell our listeners a little bit about, you know, jazz and, and how it's a very, you know, it's a very important part of our heritage. It, it is, um, I mean, the, the soul and the nature of jazz music. And is, where it was born from out culture. from, yeah. Of course, it's brought to the Americas. Uh, I mean, in, in, let's say in, in the United States. I mean, jazz, jazz is coming from the black American heritage mm -hmm, of mm -hmm, culture, mm -hmm. whether it's from the folk or from the slave song. Nothing lives in its own universe. Jazz is, is, is coming out of blues. Mm. Blues is coming out of, 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 of farming songs, uh, slave songs from the plantations, mm -hmm. uh, work songs from the cotton fields. Mm -hmm. It's a long, organic development. Mm -hmm. Jazz, of course, is coming into a refinement element, let's say from the blues, where people are using more expanded chord worlds to flavor the complexity of the music. That's an, that's a, that's an organic process mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. the blues. Mm -hmm. But blues and jazz, you can't, you can't separate them. But, but in America, jazz, let's say New Orleans, let's say the horn sections. Right. It's a reason that someone is saying, I mean, all the trumpets and the trombones and the horn sections blended into New Orleans jazz. They are really strong influences from Mexico mm. because they're Mexicans and the Spanish history in the, mm -hmm. the Americas mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is also trumpets and horns. Right. And that is blended. The American uh, New Orleans is fusion of French culture, all the shades of black American, African culture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, English culture, Latin American, Spanish culture. That's why it's such a fantastic music because it's total rainbow music mm. and the horn sections are coming a lot from Mexican music because Mexican bands in the late 1800s used to tour New Orleans and of course the black musicians were getting inspired by that it's not a question of the Mexican who brought it they flavored it mm. and of course there's always the Afro spirit I know that's a well, big term yeah, what that you means know, you've, got, you've got that but it's that a way yeah. it's a way it's, it's a heart of rhythm so it's a groove of rhythm <laughs> It's okay. all these things okay. that you identify. You just know it's about the vibe. Okay, you're getting everybody worked up there. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm come. enthusiastic about it. Yeah, go on then. Uh, yes, on. I'm, I'm going to choose uh, well something uh, a little bit romantic here to start the night oh, okay. with. Okay, interesting. Let's see if it is on. So he's getting himself ready, people. And um, yeah, here we go. Thank 
Sorry, I just got to turn up in order to get to my mind. Okay. Right, yes, yeah, yeah, I thoroughly really yeah. enjoyed that. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Yeah. That's, um, right, so, whoo, very powerful. Thank you. Very powerful. So, um, anyway, I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're playing this, you're, you're also teaching this, and, um, you know, I could see that, it, you know, you really sort of put everything you have into it. It's fantastic. Mm. I mean, the, the, How do you I feel? Mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, uh, I, of course, I mean, 
what, when you, you you're in the flow of playing, mm-hmm. uh, you could be very hyperly aware of your mistakes that you're you know, making. You know what I'm going to do, actually? It can, um, a listener, any listener, can you just... Can you just text in and just let us know how it sounded? If um, if it was, you know, I don't mean the the quality of it, but just how it sounded on your um, on your radio, on your computer, on your phone, um, if you don't mind. Thank you. But yeah, carry on, Henry. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you're playing, of course, there's so many processes of uh, being nervous or you feeling, oh God, I hit a wrong note there. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, but that's again got to do with the endless amounts of days you've done it. The more days you've done it, the the more confident. But <laughs> yeah, but there's still an ocean where you feel. I mean, to really just be totally in tune that you're so confident in what you're doing. But then again, the nervousness is part of it because it gives the nerve of the heart. Because one thing is just blowing in an instrument, but that's not the whole universe. Mm-hmm. Are, are you connected with your heart? Uh, but then again, the more you play and open up, the more you can quickly connect to your heart. Because what a saxophone is, it's a singing instrument. Mm, mm, mm. I, I'm singing. Yeah, I, I could it, be using yeah. my voice, but I'm using an extension here because maybe sometimes you feel that you want to hide behind an instrument. <laughs> then you don't have to sing a lot of words that maybe you're not in the mood to mm. sing. Like, I, 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 I'm nearly always, always in a mood to play on my saxophone. But I think what I like about the... Um, the the, the bowing instrument is you know it's pure breath isn't it it's, it's you breath, and yeah yes. and that's so it's almost like your spirit is exactly. kind of I, f- yeah. I, find, I find it easier to sit for six hours blowing into a horn and mm-hmm. hearing sounds than being in the mood to sing mm-hmm. because w- 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 words of course they, they are challenging in another way because if you're singing a love song of a baby I love I mean how can you go deeply into that without actually envisioning or the words actually can cause you a lot of pain well, this is why. But here, this well, you just exactly. Travel. And yeah, you asked me a question before in the first round before oh, I played. Right. I picked up this intro actually quite late in my when I was thirty years old. Mm. I didn't start mm. when I was five years old. I picked it up maybe when I was in my twenties. I was dream maybe of blowing. Inside. I picked up a saxophone to express my heart, my soul, and also to blow my pain out. Mm. Yeah, because mm. yeah, I mean, music is a form of expression and when you're listening to it it's you're consuming it and, yeah. and that's why as well it's very important to be careful about what you're consuming musically yeah. um as well so yeah yeah because i found be, that very because very because this instrument i mean you can connect i mean mm-hmm. the breath again breath is like in any kind of spirituality it's got to do with your spirit and your soul and how you connect to your emotions and uh, playing on a saxophone connects you very directly to your heart now I think, as a medium, I I am always in the mood to play my saxophone because it always brings me back to my heart. But th- th- because you're playing some, doesn't mean that I'm really in tune with all different kinds of layers and the deepest things in my heart. Yes, maybe if you play for an hour or two, because it's also about moods. Once you start playing, or once you stay playing play with, let's say, a backing track mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. with a band, mm-hmm. the new parts of your heart, because we, we are multi-dimensional beings. Of course. So it's not just like, well, I have one dimension to my heart, mm-hmm. because there are worlds that are lying deep in your heart that mm-hmm. maybe are very difficult, accessible. How do you get them forced? Yes, you can go to therapy, mm-hmm. you can go to a massage, or mm-hmm. you can uh, fall in love, or you can have a love in your life, and then that connects or you can have children that w- awaken certain things but i do find that this instrument is a magical tool to connect and, and it's almost as, as well i think when you play an instrument it's almost as though you are not because everything else can feel like attachment and i suppose you could you know it's it's kind of less attachment than say some of the other things you mentioned yeah I, I, yes it, it, uh, it, it's it can be it's something very, that's just for very you organic yeah. mm-hmm. because i mean you, you're using your stomach that's, uh, the, the, the lung, the, the air that's blown out mm-hmm. is coming from your stomach. Mm-hmm. So when you're playing a lot, mm-hmm. you're working a lot in your stomach abdominal region. But mm-hmm. that means you're also connecting with someone, well, to use in the kind of yoga terms, mm-hmm. chakras, mm-hmm. different parts of your energy field. So you're mm-hmm. actually really connecting with that. Mm-hmm. It's about breath. I mean, all kind of yoga practice or mindfulness, you all say breathe deeply. I mean, people say breathe deep, take a deep breath. Yeah. It's deeply in all cultures because the deep breath connects you with the deeper side of yourself. Now yeah. there's no limit to how deep you can explore yourself through as a wind instrument. Mm-hmm. For me, I do not, when it's absolutely best in exploration, mm-hmm. it is a spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. There's not a world of the highest order in myself, in personal experiences, mm-hmm. that I have not connected through this. I can really 
open up my third Find eye, yourself. my yeah. crown chakra. Mm-hmm. But but also, it just connects you with your heart, and you know, it can bring your innocence back to you. Henry, yeah. Um, people listening to the show, um, like I said, you know, this is a real, you know, my as you know, my main thing is personal development, spiritual development, yeah. and. If anyone's out there and they've got something, you, you mentioned you learnt this at, at the age of 30. And say somebody's out there, they really want to do something. They really want to harness a skill or, you know, you know, do something that maybe they, they might be feeling, oh gosh, you know, I don't yeah. know if I can do it or maybe it's too late yeah. to do it. Yeah. How would you how would you motivate that person and I mean, reassure them that? There's no age that should make you restricted in your ability or wish to learn a piano. I know there's a lot of people in their 40s and 50s who, you know, have gone through maybe the certain careers or jobs who pick up instruments and who start, let's say, play the piano. Mm-hmm. I think it, that is accelerated. Now there are older people mm-hmm. who want to sit because they maybe never really got the chance when they're young. There's so much lack of music in normal primary and secondary education. I know they're doing it, but it's just pittance according to what we do. So. 95% of the nation who actually could be playing music instrument or engaging are just uh, not connected with that because you were told that you couldn't sing in class or you sound different and there's so many people all from your family mm-hmm. to everybody else telling you can't sing you can't do this mm-hmm. and therefore you have a nation of human beings who are living cut off from the glorious social and personal mm-hmm. experience of playing a music because music instruments not just yes it's yourself you can spend thousands of hours entertaining yourself but music stretches out and it's a wonderful form of well, social is, yeah. communion with other people there's nothing like being with other musicians mm. it's like returning to your childhood when you are playing that's why, why we want to get together as musicians here you can in the adult world of all the deep seriousness of money earning and and careers mm. here you can play like a because child. it's our divine path mm. To be musical. Henry, someone has responded to the question, you know, where I asked, um, it's Jazz PMA, um, who says it sounded wicked from where I was listening. He plays very well. So I hope that helps you too. Thank you very much. I, I, God you God bless you on, on, so on, on that powerful it's, it's statement. It's sounding good out yes, there. Thank you very so, much for that statement. Yeah. That was lovely. That's inspiring to hear. And yeah, uh, so, um, yes. Y- yeah, so really, we just, you know, just we just would like you to... Um, just explain to people how you got how you got started in the whole business uh, of music. I know this is yes. I, I, as I, said, I mentioned before, I started saxophone when I was thirty, but b- maybe going back five years earlier, I yeah. started. My first instrument is guitar, oh. and I am in love with my guitar at mm-hmm. the moment. I have had a, a rebirth. I've always played guitar, but in certain periods, for long periods, I haven't actually picked because I've always just picked up my saxophone. Nice. But in recent years, I have really returned to playing my guitar. A string instrument is a glorious activity. Mm-hmm. Now, when you think about playing music, you don't have to have ambitions that I need to go out and be a star or even play out. Just sitting at home, even when you're watching TV or with other people, having a guitar in your hand, because a, a guitar is not intruding, a saxophone is more, is more like an ego instrument. Oh, right. like, I mean, you can't avoid, if I'm sitting in a room and you're playing, you, you, you'll intimidate everybody oh, with so it. A guitar is a but a guitar, you can stroke it's it like a cat uh-huh. or your lover. And strings, there's no limit to the magic of fingers touching strings or anything, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My opinion about music instruments is is about magic in your hands. You think or you can get play beautiful music just easy. It is an endless physical practice, but you can make your practice pleasurable just by respecting where you are. You don't have to be a world class musician, but just the fact that you're interacting, let's say, with strings, bending strings, and taking the eternal challenge of surrender. Now, for me, it's the same as yoga and meditation. Mm. To work your hands over guitar strings. You will see every day I play, I'm aware of let go, let go, let go, let go, because you're tensing your fingers. It's about suppleness, sensitivity. And to let your fingers dance with some strings that you can bend is an endless pleasure and an endless development level. Very good, have. very good. So you mentioned there meditation. How how significant is that in your life? Do you do it on a daily uh, yes, basis? I, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I don't, 
it's not, I, I must say, uh, there's periods. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, yes, I do sit down, actually where I technically sit down is in a lotus position, mm -hmm. close my eyes and say, now I'm going to really spend time being mindful of following my breath or, mm -hmm. or using certain mantras. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think um, if I, I think I get such huge doses of parallel universes to the meditation through my musical technical application because when I play piano let's say I I put on a backing track with one peak uh, a pair of, of speakers uh, or headphones and then I put another pair of headphones from my piano so I live in it so when I'm playing and studying and playing along to music mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am constantly reminding myself it's about absolute surrender mm -hmm. You have a lot of things disturbing your body. I mean, you've been out at work, you're walking through the streets, stress, cars, and getting on the bus, uh, yeah. watching the news, uh, but you problems have to in find Syria. I mean, this, or you're constantly stressed in your body. Mm -hmm. But I'm constantly aware when I'm trying to learn, develop my piano playing, mm -hmm. at every moment to surrender. Because mm -hmm. the quickest way to move forward, let's say, in the technical aspect of piano playing, is to surrender. Because it's all about muscle groups, it's about your neurological sin, your nerves, your psyche, and we are blocked. We're full of emotional blocks, so but you, you can't recognize them. You only recognize them when you let go of them. Then you say, "Oh God, what was that?" Because you could be having pains in your body. Because why don't you sit there 24 hours playing? Because you have a pain in your backside, mm -hmm. or have a pain <laughs> because piano playing. I mean, if you're not trained, you'll be tired after f five minutes, two minutes. You get tired. You, you get a pain you in your arm. Your, yeah. Even at practice piano player, it's physically, physically very hard work. Now, so when I'm sitting there, I'm constantly trying when I'm aware of it, let go, be open in your heart to what you're listening to. Just let go of your ego. Because your ego is always there you stopping know, that's, you. That's the big thing, isn't it's it? It's all about that. That is what gets in our way more than anything it's else, ego. isn't it? Constant ego our problems. Our ego is our... Uh, it's, it's always letting us down and it can also yeah. stop us from going, you know, achieving and, and going where we yeah. would like to yeah. and where our spirit is, yeah. you know. You, you, you find that you can listen more to the ego at times instead of your intuitive... Exactly. Yeah. But, but, but how, how, I mean, we have an ego mind, but of course an ego we use in our persona or our mentality. Well, it is necessary. Uh, yes, yeah, an, an ego, but we it's use an ego to, to move through time and space. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go eat now. Mm. I need to get to work now. Get yeah. up out of the bed. I mean, the, the ego is a tool. It's like a navigator. It's a sat nav mm -hmm. that you have in your system. Now, what life is about is to refine the ego to it to be coming from a healthy source, mm -hmm. or pre pre preferably from a divine source at every given moment. But that's self development, and every single day we get older. That's what our life's about. Yeah, because as do you find as you get older, it's even more prevalent that you focus on developing you, yes, yes. you know, and yeah, because, I mean, decision, spiritually and yes, because yeah. I mean your, your decision making in life, your say career, mm -hmm. is full of a lot more. I mean, you have an endless amount of baggage you're coming with from mm -hmm. a long life, mm -hmm. and that is a, your blessing and it's your weakness. Mm -hmm. Because when you're young, you just jump at things. Or oh, you yeah. say, I want to be an actor. I just go and do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you get older, then you have all these tape recorders that are going from. Oceans yes. of inner thoughts mm. that are uh, from family that have been telling you you can't do that. Programs, your friends, yes. environment. Mm -hmm. Yes, we totally programmed. Mm -hmm. And Story. think about all the endless layers for every single minute of a life we put mm. on top of our dreams. Mm. And now I, I, I mean, I, 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 every day I spend time writing because yes, I yeah. know no, that that. that's just another form. Music is yes, a music. It's so like you, you're yeah. returning to mm -hmm. the divine. Mm -hmm. uh, feels of the childish paradise mm -hmm. but I, I like to write because I like to reflect into where I'm coming from yeah. because instead of being a victim of emotions oh I got stuck in this part of my life if I'd done that then mm -hmm. if you write you can explore anything under the sun you can explore biochemistry poetry mm -hmm. incarnation mm -hmm. write about your family remember the endless days of your childhood mm -hmm. with your friends the things you did with them the toys mm -hmm. played how you were feeling it is just full of scripts mm -hmm. for short stories movie scripts mm -hmm. theater scripts mm -hmm. but it's also an exploration instead of being a victim of life of the heaviness of growing older because if you if you just grow older without being released and fulfilled and you even feel guilty about being happy mm -hmm. you feel guilty about dancing and laughing because it's only the youth that laugh and and and, and mm -hmm. are immature in their games and play so to return so to that keep your child within yes 
revived, keep yes. reviving and as keep it alive. Keep it alive with the child, mm. as you will have to in the Bible, as you said, you return to the fields of childhood. Only then shall you enter the gates of prophecy mm-hmm. and the divine world. Because if you're not childlike, because a child as a being is open mm-hmm. and lives more from the spur of here and now yes. and that is the divine plan. living in the now yeah in and the present, as we could yeah. become adults and put all these endless programming society programs that have made society walk around we think it's normal to walk around and being serious as, and walking around as zombies mm. and uh, to be unhappy is just the real yeah, state of walk, maturity if you go down to say the city people are just you know they're just you know, blank. There's no emotion. Yeah. It's just everyone is just, you know, yeah. kind of zombified and it's not fun. Well, of course, in the West End, they are having fun and so because uh, that's where people <laughs> go to read. No, but uh, people go to their offices and then yes, you have to be there. I mean, it's not that bad. I, mean, I think that there are people that do have good jokes at their mm, computers mm, in their offices. Mm. But it's a, a release happens after work, after the drinks, in the weekend, weekend getting drunk and drugs and drink. Uh, because why? Because the human soul wants to be free. The human soul wants to be transcendental. The human soul doesn't want to be limited. And we see it as natural. Or oh, we have to have a serious world where people are serious in their etiquette, per, per, persona, mm-hmm. and behavior. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise we can't function. I think we can function much more effectively and much more responsibility, mm-hmm. even doing the serious thing, or let's say building shelter and making all these things, mm-hmm. if we have a liberated, free, loving heart, because that's where the visions come well, from. This is it, yeah. Visionary mm-hmm. plans are not coming from people who have, uh, who don't have that childish imagination. Mm. Einstein and all his visions, he's a hyperly transcendental man. Things like Very that are coming so. in, in daydreams. He was mm-hmm. saying a lot of his great inventions came while he's walking like Lucy, in daydreaming. Lucy dreaming. Lucy dreaming. Yeah, yeah, very and Because powerful. the parallel universes of the spiritual world mm-hmm. and our endless dreams. I like to write about dreams uh, nearly every day mm-hmm. because, my God, mm-hmm. there's oceans of film scripts and dreams. <laughs> there's oceans of super fantastic fantasy stories to mm-hmm, talk about. Mm-hmm. But not only that, because we live in many parallel worlds. Mm-hmm. Our soul incarnates may be in one dimension in this kind of bodily, but we have an endless uh, affinity with other levels of the parallel spiritual Because I like that. So, you know, if you're going through um, a bad time or you're not fit, you can always transcend that yeah. by going uh, to higher levels yeah, of and, and, and for, for, for me, so just to, to, to be down to earth, it's about tools. Mm-hmm. I mean, life is difficult. Struggling, work, money, just physically being in the body, we all have pain, aches and pains in your mm. back, your toes, or you're too hot, you're too cold. Is it, but okay, what tools do we have to continually bring us back to a inspired state? I'm not mm. talking about a happy state, but why sit and, 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 and pretend you are happy when you're not happy? So, do something what can about you, it. Yeah, do something. What can you do uh, to say, instead of being I'm in down into an unhappy state of being in a straitjacket or blocked emotion, mm-hmm. disappointment in love, or money problems or with the physical place where you live what tools do you have i know what tools i use mm. i do yoga i like to dance and i like to something i want to do a hundred times more this year because it's just it's just, mm. it's just a way of living you feel better you so what look you're saying better is people yeah. should people yeah, should yeah. find what yeah what, what makes them feel it's good? It's like tool, tools, tools. Mm-hmm. What tools inspire you? Mm. Okay, I have my music instrument and mm-hmm. I know damn well I escape into a lot of them a lot of the time. Mm. It may, you call it escapism. Yes, call it escapism or, uh, or longing or for the divine. Going, yeah, going into your soul, your You're spirit. Soul, yeah, yeah. Or just returning to yourself, mm-hmm. returning to your heart. Mm-hmm. Just be, being allowed to be, where, where do you go to be sensitive? Because if mm-hmm. you don't have any outlet, it becomes frustration. Okay, then it's like drinking. It's not like a, taking not a, drugs. Yeah, not a good. Yeah, yeah but where, where, do you, where do you go? Turn on the television, watch 15 hours of TV. Yeah, that's Or too much on <laughs> the internet. Gonna, yeah, it's yeah, not there's many. Life is full of drugs. Mm. Whether it's television, yeah, shopping, this, shopping or, yeah, yeah. Uh, eating cakes, mm. overeating. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, then you say, okay, just you make an endless research about what it drives. Because, of course, I'm also in, living in lust. I also. Uh, Crave is this craving? What is the root of your craving? Because that's that, that's it, isn't it? It's craving. getting to the root of yeah. why you're yeah. doing exactly. distracted, why you're performing yeah. distracted habits. And I'm, and I'm not, yeah. not going to sit here, even even though I sit here and play music instruments. Uh, I, this is not enough. You still, need, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm interested in thousands of other facets of mm, life. Of course, I'm interested in psychology. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in literature. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in writing, as we mentioned before. Mm-hmm. I want I want to get on the floor, do yoga. I want to dance human interaction 
So music is one medium, of course. but life is much more than just a music instrument. Of course, I mean, what, what This is just an instrument. Uh, and and that's what we, we need to do, we need to keep exploring, because that's what spirit exploring. really wants, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. To explore yeah. many explore areas. And, yeah. and, and, and grow, and, 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 and of course, again, the, coming back to the tools, let's say, the tool of writing, there is no limit to where you can go in your own mm. thoughts. I mean, even, do you dare confront your broken hearts in in literature well it, that's it's so painful because i can feel there's certain yeah. things you don't want to write about yeah. oh god i don't want to write about that breakup with that girlfriend at that time <laughs> because it's actually it's actually if you actually start to let's say write mm -hmm. say, i'm going to focus on that 1970 uh, but that can be quite healing can't it's, it's, i know it's healing but when you actually meet those gates you may be because actually though some of those sores and scars could still be there and actually mm. not really healed mm. and that's yes. where the trickery is how yes. how much and do you dare challenge even unpleasant universal feelings that you don't want to touch wow, yeah. and even looking at things oh god and even looking at the things you did to other people well this is it as well isn't it because it's a two-way street it's isn't a two -way it street. Mm. it's a two-way street henry do you want to do you want to yeah do you want to do the next one look i feel oh, like oh, crying i'm going to play something here it's got okay um it's a classical song henry hold on yeah. we've got we've got a text a text message. yes sounds great let's let me read it out for you. Loving the vibe on your show. Very positive and uplifting. Your guest is very good. And this is Delhi from Bristol. All the way from Bristol. Thank, Thank you, you very Delhi. much. And, uh, and bless you blessings too. to you. And, and I, I'm, I'm really happy that we're in an interaction with other people that, yes, wonderful. And maybe one day, I don't know whether people call in one day, they call in and they give their view because these, these are existential issues about life. I'm not just sitting here as a musician because... I, I have my crises every day. Mm. Also, if you, you're asking yourself, what are you doing? Is this leading you anywhere? <laughs> is this really what you, you need to... I'm not talking about what you're doing, what you think you want to do. Mm. Is this really your destiny? Mm -hmm. Or what type of music are you playing? Or should you be a doctor? Mm -hmm. Why not be a masseur and mm -hmm. give something? Because there's many ways of giving. Yes. But one thing I do know, I just know, and that's from maybe a brainwash, that I always can come back and return to a happy world with my music instruments that will heal me mm -hmm. in frustrated nights or unhappy nights. I just know that the music is a tool to always save me. I don't know whether I would be alive if I didn't have my music so instruments. Suppose people don't play an instrument. Could, would you suggest that they sing? Or yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're the most direct form. <laughs> Let's and sing, you sing a song. song. Oh, no. yeah, at the end of it, I know that I'm hiding behind wind instruments when I actually should be singing along because I used to be a singer in a band. Oh, really? And I know that I'm going to go back to it because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the human voice is the most brilliant instrument. So it's, even it's, just it's, start a singing and forget about what people told so you. So voice, ex voice expressing. Voice, yeah. And, I mean, wants anybody to. can go to a choir, join a gospel band, mm. or go to the church, sing, go, go to singing lessons, sing at home. And not all this eternal cliche, yes, when you ask people, I always sing in, in the shower. <laughs> because why place. sit and accentuate brainwashed culture where 90% of people, 95, mm -hmm. uh, have been told to shut up. Yes, and, it's, sure. and, 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 and that is a cultural thing in all mm. countries. I, I've sit grown down, up in Denmark. Sit down and yeah. shut up. Yes. And, and you know, uh, we, we can turn sit on and watch the uh, oceans of movies on TV, but if somebody in your family wants to maybe express something in a different way, they are shut up. Well, this is the thing. This is the thing. It's like sitting in front of the tell lie vision. Yeah. And, you know, people people should be around the table or, yeah. you know, we don't, you know, dancing yeah. and singing. Families, you know, children should be singing. Of course, of course, it, of course there, but you, we, they don't need to be no, watching. We, we are so um, digitalized that we so mm -hmm. we turn on because we want to be entertained. And in that way, we can escape our mm -hmm. self. I know it also my own family patterns. Mm -hmm. Talking about family patterns. Mm -hmm. I mean... I wish in our family we were sitting there jamming music hours together, but we do, but we don't. Then we, no, then okay. It's also nice to sit and talk, of course. Uh, of course. Share, share, yeah. share. I mean, but that's also something. Yeah, uh, yeah. For human beings to sit and talk is just, just as holy. Do you think it, um, in our busy 21st century a lifestyle, do you think things are changed? Because people used to do that, didn't I mean, they? But things are wrong in, in this world. You look here. We have hundreds of television channels, millions of radio channels. Mm -hmm. Everybody is entertaining and themselves. Doing the same as, as, yeah, we are turning on the TV from morning to evening. But 
If you meet a man singing on the street, you think, oh, this guy's got a he's mentally disturbed. Yeah, yeah. If you I mean, meet a poet standing on the street, this person should be uh, going into the mental hospital mm-hmm. because or oh, see the psychiatrist or psychologist. If people are playing live music, the neighbors start to call and complain at uh, at seven But o'clock yet, in so the evening. Watch, They uh, want to watch a hundred violent movies on TV mm-hmm. with uh, the the sound turn on the surround sound. Mm-hmm. But when people organically do it, like poetry or in in front of them. It's it's banned. I know. I, I, as a musician, I, I look. I I, I live in London. Mm. Uh, uh, playing music in a, in an apartment which I live in is, is a, oh, a shared house is a constant problem because you're always thinking about your neighbors. Uh, I, I, I've 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 recently come to London two and a half years from Copenhagen, which is uh, the capital city of Denmark. Now the police have made new laws. You cannot play outdoor music at all unless you get a police license. Oh my goodness! Uh, and so on. <laughs> okay, I'll give you I'll give you a metaphor. Uh, I don't know. Five years ago, I was playing at a jazz festival. Uh, yeah. Summer this time of year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they have they have some lakes in Copenhagen. Okay. And there's some cafes mm-hmm. on the lakes, literally on the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, they're built up sort of uh, mm-hmm. like uh, yeah. a, a marina. Uh, okay. So there's a cafe out there. Mm-hmm. And then we were playing about uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Acoustic yeah. music. Acoustic, yeah. not yeah. electric rock music. Yeah. Acoustic yeah. music. Yeah. And the, the closest. Uh, now this is jazz festival, and they, they've been given a license afternoon jazz on the lake mm-hmm. not next to an apartment but somebody walked 400 yards from an apartment and came up to the bartender at two o'clock in the afternoon and said by the way not because i mind but do you have a license to play live music at two o'clock in the afternoon wow. with an acoustic guitar at the jazz festival It's now a- this spirit is going all over because when i in copenhagen you know, I've, i've gone around to a lot of cafes asking for live music gig. Mm-hmm. the cafe owners who said there's 300 of them in copenhagen they say 90 want live music but there's always somebody upstairs saying we will not accept it even though it's so acoustic music one, uh, one yeah but we're not i'm not talking about rock bands i'm talking about acoustic music yeah yeah it's not gonna yeah, be yeah uh, even if we play at seven o'clock Oh, there's always somebody living in the apartment upstairs that has an attitude towards live music, and this is where we are in modern humanity. But they want to see a hundred violent movies yeah. in a week, where people uh, on a surround sound system up in their apartment, oh, yes. but cannot tolerate. And that is the stigma of how we are living as modern humanoids. Yes, we all digitalized up, we all in smart clothes, mm-hmm. we're walking around in our own loneliness. And we all actually longing for a much more free, happy world oh, where we're not all dependent on the money game. Mm-hmm. That is the root mm-hmm. of it. And, and, and but I think most human beings we, we want to have more freedom, but we we, we just got into a but program it's zombie becoming, role. We're, we're losing more and more of our freedom. Yeah. Um, as no, I, but don't you think? At the end, again, the, the, I think the, the the next generation, young people. You won't have fun. They want to party. I, I work with young people yeah. every day. When I, when I I'm aware that I work with young people because mm-hmm. when I sit out, I don't behave like them because my biological and my emotional system is 20, 30 years down the road from them. Yeah. I see their smiles, their jokes, their mucking around all day, and the youth are the youth, and they're exactly the same as we were. Of course. And they haven't. They're not. They're. Not, they don't look oppressed. But then again, they're up against things like. The pressure of education and jobs, and of course the whole brainwash of of how pessim- pessimism, the pessimists lead mm-hmm, the agenda, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the narrative of the media, mm-hmm. and that's what's got to change. Yeah, and this yeah. is that's a longer that's a longer discussion. This about media, how how yeah, uh, yeah. pessimism, mm-hmm. uh, because w- 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 women, the UK economy, who says it's bad? It's all in the minds of the people. If you say the economy is good, then you feel it's good. Uh, this is a rich country. And there's you go and see poverty. It's a, it's a disgrace to talk about enormous economic problems when you go to Africa and see real poverty. Mm-hmm. And here we are moaning about all kinds of things. We ha- everybody has a right. It's free to take a breath of air. It's free to smile. What is your excuse for not being a nice person to another person in this side? Don't say that it's David Cameron's fault or it's the economy's fault. We have a freedom to be friendly and heartful to each other. It's free of charge. All the best that the life free of charge. The, so people need to focus on the inner, inner part of themselves yeah. and share that because we are all spiritually. Yeah, but, 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 but I, look, I, as I say, I picked up music when I was late. I didn't. In my childhood, we had a piano. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I think my dad bought it for my sister. I don't remember childhood being given music lessons. Or in the 1960s in Denmark, when we had music lessons, we'd be playing on recorder. <laughs> Today, the young people have got amplifiers, electric guitars, oh, pianos. Yeah, are different. Yeah, they, yeah, they're yeah. blowing their mind. Mm-hmm. Therefore, 99% of us never ever played music. Uh, my brother's a, a guitarist. I remember he played. I spent my youth being a sportsman, 
So I had a, a wonderful youth uh, in athletics, nice. a glorious youth, because when you are 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, it's about the social life, too. it's about your yeah. mates and having Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. So, but I am also aware that if I wasn't playing music, I think I'd be complaining a lot more about things, or more grumpy or mm-hmm. negative about mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I look at the world, my God, when I say play music, many, many, many people maybe go dancing and salsa mm-hmm. the weekend, because uh, I think dancing is the most wonderful thing, activity. Absolutely. So maybe you get your rocks off there. Absolutely. But I mean, if you don't have that, my God, then, 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 then if life is not spiced up, what, 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 what is life then? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so um, you have heard him. You've heard him talk about his um, what makes his heart sing and you know what probably doesn't make his heart sing. So he is going to play another track. What, what's this one? Well, this is a melody from Latin America, Afro-Latin, uh, mm-hmm. called Blue Boss. It's, it's, a, it's a classic. <laughs> But I, I, I tell you this musically, I love endlessly many styles. But of course, African music is something that I, when I play, mm-hmm. I just know I connect with certain emotionalities that belong mm-hmm. to my mother's culture. Because I know it. The way you play uh, trumpet or horn, mm-hmm. uh, Afro players have a different emotional vibration mm-hmm. about that. It's just different, mm-hmm. and I, I can, I can contact that through mm-hmm. my saxophone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of my daily walk, I can't. But the mixture of that and the Latin American rhythm world, mm-hmm. let's say, I love Afro-Cuban music. I've been to Cuba, mm-hmm. I love their music. Oh, yeah. Their rhythm sections, I, I've been to Jamaica, I love reggae. Uh, these fusion mm-hmm. universes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I'm going to play this, is of course, uh, 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 it's a bossa nova. So okay. it's Brazilian jazz. Right, so, okay. Yeah, let's, it's, let's called, it's called blue bossa. Okay, let's have uh, it. Let me just turn let it on. Let me just um, close uh, Hit the button down. here and then off we go. Here we Thank <laughs> you. 
smoke if you let that stop your swag. You just had a little turbulence, so shake off the jet lag. You sang that song before, time to make a remix. Transform from the dung of the earth and fly high like a phoenix. You have genius within, don't conceal, but reveal it. And let your dream vibrate so the whole world can feel it. Don't sit around with your head down in a comfort zone being content while the world is waiting for you to step up and represent because you are genius. Represent because you, you, you are genius. You are you genius. You are genius. You are you genius. Are genius. In your cranium, you have the same power that powers the sun. You are pure fire, electromagnetism, a biochemical, physical luminary, carrying the Akashic DNA of great men and women of history. So the question becomes, the question becomes, what's your purpose? Who are you? Because what man has done, man can do. So take a look in the mirror, you're a miracle, and there's nothing in this world that you can't do. When you focus like laser beams, your dreams will be felt and seen. And when obstacles come on the road, your head you must hold. Keep your balance, flow at a steady pace, stay focused, man. Love thyself and keep the faith. Remember, everything is a process, and bringing anything to birth will be painful. So give birth to the genius that lives inside of you, because you are are genius. You are genius. Right, we're back, and um, I enjoyed that. I hope you did as well. Um, so, Henry, um, we're going to keep going. And yeah. how, are, you, are you able to talk after all that? Absolutely. I know it's hard work blowing, <laughs> but uh, even more inspired. Yes, yeah. Mm, so um, let's go to, you do filmmaking, don't you? Yeah, so. I, I've, I've uh, I mean, f for many, many, many years, it goes back to the late 1980s, as of over 20, 23 or 4 years, mm -hmm. I've been working with video production, film productions. Right. Uh, I started, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a background where I used to be at the University of Brighton, where I was doing video productions and mm -hmm. photography. I'm, I'm also admitted a, a lover of visual art. I, I'm a, I'm a, I do paint and draw. That's just something I do. And I do it every day. It's another connection than playing music. It's a... Uh, Another, another way to release. Yeah, it's just yeah. another. And because, express. Yeah, because yeah. I've, you know, it's about this endless dimensions of beauty and colors around you, and mm. it's just, and that is something I just do every day. I don't say I say I paint X six hours. I draw every day, mm. and, and that's without fail. It's just part of my hands. Just want to do it. I like to work with visual, visual art, but that also um, sort of in, entertains like uh, video production. But that's. That's not so spontaneous as sitting down just drawing on a piece mm -hmm. of paper because I can do that anywhere. But I do video productions and I you know some years ago I, I had the pleasure of going to Ghana uh, yes. to, to work here. Yeah. Well, I drummed up a project uh, with... Uh, how, how, did you, how did you get to... Yeah, but it it, it happened, I mean, I, I wanted to travel to Ghana to make some documentary films about cultural issues and then I drummed up this project uh, uh, to, to uh, approach... At that time, I was living in Copenhagen. I decided to approach, uh, th at that time, the Ghana National Airline, Ghana Airways. Right. But you seek your fate. I went to a reception mm -hmm. at the Ghana Embassy in Copenhagen because they were having a party because Ghana Airways were planning to fly direct flights from Copenhagen via f uh, Germany to Accra. They were going to start airline flights. Okay. So they had a huge reception at the Ghana mm -hmm. Embassy. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard of that because I've been thinking about that for years. You know, going to Ghana and making some connections with doing some projects of video and film. Mm -hmm. And I got to the to the Ghana Embassy reception one afternoon and I met the director of the, Ger the German flight operations at the reception, a man in a suit. <laughs> and we spoke for two minutes. I told him I wanted to go to Ghana and make uh, documentary films uh, about Ghanaian culture. Yes. And I would, if you fly me to Ghana, I'll give them to you to show on board your flight. Within two minutes, he said, done. He put his hand forward and said, done. Wow. That's how we, that's how we got started. So about a, minute, a month or two later, sorted out uh, visa and mm -hmm. vaccinations. And then off we went on a 10-day excursion to Ghana at the expense of Ghana Airways. Uh, been shown around, taken uh, to nice hotels. And with uh, two 24-hour uh, day attendants to drive us around the country and sightsee. And we went 
all well not all, all over again we def- we went to the to to um, some of the castles. It was a, fest- it was a festival. Yes, we yeah. went to a, a, a very big festival of kings and queens. Mm-hmm. This was taking pa- place in the Ashanti uh, football stadium, a massive football stadium, mm-hmm. sp- uh, space for 100,000 people. 100,000 wow. people were there that mm-hmm. afternoon. Mm-hmm. So it was an all day pageant. Now, it was a commemoration and celebration for the Ashanti kings and queens. It is to celebrate. In a, in a short explanation, the Asantehini, the Asantehini, he's the he's the king of the whole Ashanti nation of Ghana. Mm-hmm. Now the Ashantis are forty five percent of the Ghanaian population, the yeah. biggest ethnic group. Right, yeah. So he's yeah. the top chief, mm-hmm. and uh, he's he, he he every five years they have a Durba, a celebration for him. Mm-hmm. So what they were celebration when I went there actually goes back to two thousand four was. Uh, he had been in power for five years mm-hmm. after the previous Asante he need, had died. So this man was appointed. He was brought in as the yeah. Head. So when when they, they had a celebration of the Asante Hini, uh, for his Durba festival, they would then bring in a pageant of uh, of participating Ashanti kings and queens, wow. and there was about seven hundred of them there. Wow. So it was a total, unreal splash of color and pageantry, out of this world. And I think I think one of the few places in Africa where you know that kind of royalty is still as strong as in Ghana. It was mind blowing. If European yeah. people saw this, <laughs> if you look at the Queen of England and her dress up, mm. it is nothing compared okay. to what these African kings and queens could mount. They came there in oceans of gold, bracelets, mm-hmm. necklaces, wow. jewelry, earrings, uh, kente cloth gold braided mm-hmm. ca- of course 700 kings and queens in one event over 24 hours mm-hmm. it was and you don't go there uh, being petty you go there to show all your wealth and the, the Ghanaian kings and queens are endowed with mountains of gold jewelry wow. and astonishing wealth you wouldn't be in your own mm-hmm. eyes mm-hmm. so what what would happen like we started in the morning so they'll be having like uh, floats uh, going through the town, right. Kumasi. And Kumasi is the second biggest town in Ghana. It's a big city, two million people, mm-hmm. two and a half, three million people. So they will have floats from different parts of the town congregating towards where the the football stadium were. Mm-hmm. Thousands of people lining the streets, and then you, they'll go with all their massive umbrellas. And of course, this is a competition. Who, what village town? Can wow. portray most color and show as if you got affluence. So they were, the clothes were stunning, men and women. Mm. And then you have umbrellas, you have all the traditional fetish dress. I'm talking about the spiritual African traditional. Wow. Would be uh, dressed up. You know, this is the so-called voodoo man mm-hmm. who will be dressed up in all his. I mean, uh, attire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they will be walking through different parts of the town. So already that morning. From about 9, 10 in the morning, we were out there. Our video cameras were kicking it from early morning. Wow. <laughs> it was, and the sun was blazing down. It was hot. And then ev- I mean, all... How, how did you feel based on, you know, because that's, your, I mean, that's was, part of your heritage that, as, as well. It was a terrific feeling. I said, my God, this is my mother's culture. Mm. These are my roots. Mm-hmm. And to share a little story I am in I am in the royal heritage in my mother's culture we are in the royal li- lineage okay. but that's a longer story I can't go into the details now <laughs> okay. so 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 it's, it's part of that mm-hmm. this is my African half mm-hmm. my culture which I have had very little contact no I know it through my mother yes. but I haven't lived in Ghana until I left when I was a baby I was two years old so you were born there but I was you born I left uh, so my it's just been short visits so but going back and, and doing this film you know, it was, it a big was thing yeah, it's a huge emotional, spiritual, mm-hmm. psychological inspiration, and an empowerment mm-hmm. of my dormant knowledge about the greatness of my mother's culture, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that this is something that you have with you from your mother's side. Which I think is great. as well, it's really important to say as well. A lot of the time when we see the mother country, Africa, we don't get to see you know the the cultural expression we no. just see the things that yeah. maybe are not so good you yeah, know and that you so know what that's why i think it was really yeah, good and I, there's that. so many proponents nowadays in mm-hmm. progressive Af- african media and we all everybody knows that who's mm-hmm. progressive uh, 
There's so much positive development that happening. That we in have Africa. to go. We yeah. have to go. We have to. We have to face those. that. Yeah. Listen, this, the focus should be. Of course, there's endless poverty. That's very complex, mm. and there's conflicts in certain places in Africa. But 98 percent of African people live in peace mm -hmm. and have a daily life and struggling to make the money. That's where the development, the focus. There's a lot. Ghana is really a country that is booming. Mm -hmm. That not to say that there's not endless amount of things that have been done. Mm. But Ghana it's still economically. Room for improvement, is, yes highest growth figures in the world and of course there has to be a, an acceleration that these things proliferate down to the poorer people mm -hmm. it's quite simple what's needed mm -hmm. uh, skills mm -hmm. people need to, uh, to develop your economy you have to have skills so you're not just exporting your raw materials mm -hmm. but if you go and read magazines or see what's happening politically in Ghana the Ghanaians and other people are the youth of Africa are very very conscious what needs and to there's happen. A, there's, yeah. there's a high percentage of, of youth in, in on the continent, isn't there? It's oh, very, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. As Massive. soon as you land yeah, in Africa, yeah, you, yeah. you just see they straight got, away there's so higher... many more young people on the streets. Yeah, yeah. It's a physical thing. Whereas yeah. in, the, in the West, it's the, it's the opposite. Yeah, that's why I yeah. think a lot of interesting creativity in mm -hmm. filmmaking, music, mm -hmm is coming from Africa. Mm -hmm. They are hungry. Mm -hmm. They are dynamic. There's so much happening in filmmaking. Uh, here we sit in London and you look at people and I say, oh, who's, who's making a full-time living or making film? Few people. Yes. And then you go, you see a lot of young Ghanaians making movies, distributing the DVDs. Wow. Yes, they are. Wow. Uh, lots of them are making a living. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're showing them in small video cinemas, uh, selling them on DVDs. Much more dynamic in many ways than here. So do you feel Henry, that there's a big shift going on in the sort of um, in the in, you know the, uh, the mother country. Do you feel that there's a big shift where you know things are changing? People are waking up. People yeah. are finding their. Yeah, so I mean, know. okay. We also, I think, uh, let's say the internet. Uh, yes, the internet. Education. Mm. You have generations of young African people, Ghanaian people, mm -hmm. who know they can go anywhere on the internet and read about anything. They are not just going to be sitting there ignorant mm -hmm. of what kind of quality your government are serving you, your roads, your health system. You can tap into any database and see the levels other places. Mm -hmm. And if you think that a lot of things they've been eaten off with is good enough, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Your roads, your ambulance system, mm -hmm. your cell education, they'll know about that from internet. And so many Africans live abroad. So, they so get many Africans. From them I mean, as is, well. there, is there an American university without an Afri African professor? In right. the US? Oh, it's happening. Right. Right. It's, yeah. ha it's happening. So people are coming back from the you know, Europe or US or Asia mm -hmm. and they see some level others say where well, they can see this is not good enough on certain things. Mm -hmm. And 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 and, and they want but I think open. I think I mean if you speak to people in the Guinean government or if people are, people are well traveled, they they know the standards. I mean you can't you can't fly into Europe and then see uh, how well things work here and then go back but still when I see programs from Nigeria that that country with massive amount of oil wealth mm. is being stifled where uh, half the day you, you can't run your productions because there's no electricity running mm -hmm. I mean we're in 2013 you got fifth largest oil producer in the world and then half your industry cannot produce because you the electricity is down half mm -hmm. the day because they haven't built power stations this is not good enough in a country with 160 million people. It's simply it's not. Powerful, yeah, and, and this cannot. Yeah. And, 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 and the young people are going to have to. They're the ones to change. They're going to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But things are happening. So we young look, people. We should look at empowerment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's say uh, anti-corruption in Rwanda. The president of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. I read an article in New African Magazine about him. Mm -hmm. He's uh, doing some fantastic things about anti-corruption. Every government minister has to put on paper publicly what he owns under protest mm -hmm. and they've they've done dramatic uh, leaps in reducing corruption uh, things like that okay just so we're going draconian. to go into the politics yeah that's, politics, that's yeah. a longer story yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. but i'm talking about uh, again and my mother's culture mm -hmm. coming to my mother you know because my mother she came to europe in the 1960s and had a very difficult time being accepted in in danish society in the early 1960s by my fa father's family as an african woman a long long way and she really had a tough time but she persevered and that result has gone to today my mother she's now 80 at ripe age she's she's an anthropologist she's a phd anthropologist 
she's a publisher of books. I want uh, you to talk about your mum yes, for just exactly. a second. Yeah. We've got a fantastic text here for you. Um, great show, too shy to call, but love your show, love your guests. Oh, John thank you, Joe. Thank you, John Joe, thank you, John Joe for that. Joe, Joe, thank you very much for for listening in and and. Uh, I feel it's not just like a one one way connection. It's the reflection from other people listening is important because I'm saying some things, but this is about sharing uh, what we think about life and and ideas and uh, people out in in the in the listenership. I they, also they have, have uh, I also have a host of names to 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 big up. We have to big up and you know share, shout out to these wonderful yeah. people, wonderful listeners. Angel Bringle, hello, Angel. How are you? Um, Carl Foster, that's my brother. Hi, Carl, hello, you Carl. did a run fantastic show last week. Love you to bits. Um, Robert Simpson, Zach Ryan, Stella Phillips, Cool Carbon. Um, cool Carbon says fantastic plane, plane that. Sorry, fantastic play. He loves your plane, basically. Thank you very much, and I enjoy and playing with you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And that's I glorious. Think, think you should. Are you, are you ready to do another one? Shall we go to another one? Yeah, I'm ready I mean, to do it. I'm, I'm, I, mean, I, I just don't want you to kind of, you know, fall. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I'm ready to Ending like up as a heap in the corner. Yeah, or anything, let's go. I'm ready. Shall I'll, me, turn, me on the, I'll turn on the button now. And I'm <laughs> pressing the button. Ready to go. Okay. Off we go. Let me just um, let me just put the background music down yeah. for you. And here he is again. Okay. And hold on. Are you all right there? Yeah. Have you got your sound there? Oh, the okay. button is going here. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Wait. Yeah, have you got it? Have you got it? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Here he is, people. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
I just feel so calm. It just feels like it's singing to my soul. Thank you very much. And yeah. I'm able to. It, 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 it is. It, it, it is. It, I mean, it's a. It's a. It's a, it's a slightly many. It's a very classically well-known mm-hmm. jazz song called Misty. So it's a little bit yes. tearful, mm-hmm. but of course, in tears, depths of broken, sorrowed heart, there is beauty. Absolutely. Because there's no dead end. Any death or any blues mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is just uh, an opposite side of the yearning for the complete and the harmonies of love's divine Absolutely. So, which is what we yeah. all that's are. why blues is, I mean it doesn't matter where you go in the world people love blues yes, I, do, I mean the American blues mm. uh, which is of course Afro rooted is loved everywhere yes. yeah. whether you're in Japan I just or feel so calm on this thing. <laughs> 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 I'm just like oh my god thank this you this is wonderful uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank so you. you were touching on you were talking about your mum. Yeah, my colours. mother. Yeah, um, Mrs. I mean, uh, Christiana Uwari Knutsen. My mother, she's eighty years old. She lives in Denmark now and is doing very well. Mm-hmm. At age of, she is looking terrific and full of life energy. Is she she's a, a yeah, she's she's a writer. Mm-hmm. My mother, she's a, an anthropologist and she's into spiritual healing mm-hmm. and um, she at this age is uh, into research and writing. One of the latest books she's uh, written is called uh, is, 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 a, is a book called a theologian slave trader. Now the theologian slave trader you can find it on her website which is uh, Christiana Knutsen.com. It's in one word. Uh, Knutsen is our Danish surname. Christiana C H R I S T I N A K N U D S E N Christiana Knutsen.com. There you can read about her books because the latest book is which came out came out in 2010 mm-hmm. is about something that happened 200 years ago in Ghana now it is about a mixed race man like me mm-hmm. half Ghanaian and half Danish okay. Okay. born at a, at the slave forts in the beginning of the 1700s nice. now at that time of the slave forts the so-called mulattoes were separated mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from their African slaves mm-hmm. and taken and usually the boys were made uh, as to be soldiers on the fort to guard the slaves mm-hmm. I mean, this is bad karma uh, and maybe I think the, the the mulatto girls or the mixed race girls would be taken as wives of the of, of the soldiers so the Danish and French and English soldiers yeah she did, she did a lot of research at the National Library in Copenhagen mm-hmm. where you see there's oceans of material about the slave trade in at the Danish libraries but the Danish population do not know about it they have a romanticized vision that they're the first people to abolish slavery in the world the Danes which is not true because the English officially did in 1807 but the Danes have that fantasy they don't know how deeply involved the Danish the Scandinavian cultures were in slavery they were really uh, I in my own reflection Mm -hmm. when I live in a very stunningly beautiful capital city Copenhagen Mm -hmm. but uh, the inner city the aristocratic buildings a lot of it was built on slave money but nobody would dare even Mm -hmm. bring that topic up no because the richer aristocratic families how did they make their money there was in Copenhagen 200 years ago there were 2 hundred breweries in a little area the size of let's say Covent Garden and Soho in the West End 200 bre- brewing snaps alcohol to send on the ships to West Africa to sell to the African chiefs to buy slaves mm-hmm. Two, 500 breweries in a small area it was massive industry and a lot of the aristocratic families and them the rich ones even today with massive old money right, yes 
nobody talks about where that money came from. Mm. It's the same in every European culture. Of course, of course. So now, if you research and go to the Danish National Library, you'll know, what, and that's what my mother done. She spent a lot of time, she's a researcher, that's what she does, and she, she's still at it today. And, and that's what we all, we all have to do. We all have to learn about, you know, what Yeah, just no, 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 genera- yeah. no European generation should sit here and have a bad feeling about it. What your great, 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 great grandfather's done, I mean, who hasn't committed crime in the name of humanity? Every culture on this world, whether, I mean, the African chiefs have had endless tribal battles, and uh, we damn well know how a lot of that slavery took place. I mean, it was not a European man walking in, in, in the middle of the jungle picking up slaves. But you know they they came though, inland you know from. I'd say to you, though, about that, the, 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 the only thing I would say is that the, the thing is, the, um, those people, the people from over in Africa, they are not, they are not benefited. They didn't really benefit from what happened no, afterwards, did they? Not, not, really? No, yeah. no, no, no. I mean, the, the, the whole nation uh, notion of slavery. I've been to the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. I, 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 You've travelled. Yeah, I've studied because yeah. you know, I'm interested. So I mean, yes. I've been to Cuba, I've been to yeah. Jamaica, Martinique. I, of course, I'm interested in, in, in historical things. Mm-hmm. So I, I, mm-hmm. if you take an interest, then you see the, the extremity of the brutalities in the Americas. I am aware yes, because I take an interest in mm-hmm. that. I've been to Mexico too, and what the Indian people and 80 million dead Indians in, in, in the Americas. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's the same horrific the thing. Brutality. Uh, and, yeah. Yes, and then you say, okay, at, at the at the exporting end. Of course, things are very complex, mm-hmm. but uh, when when human beings, there's no there's no sort of purity that anybody uh, just say oh there, there was uh, innocence there and then that the evilness is indescribable. Mm-hmm. The um, volume of slavery and people shipped across the Atlantic mm-hmm. is indescribable, mm-hmm. and we actually only know a little because actually it's not been taken up. If you look at the, the British media. England and its television industry and film business are so obsessed by their period dramas, which is of course good, you've got to know where you're coming from. (laughs) But the fact is England has controlled a quarter of the world's planet's area. Why don't they make a lot of dramas what happened out in the colonies uh, with the Mau Mau? Yes, they had the kitchen total, very few films. How are they, how are, what went on in South Africa? What went on in India? What in, went on in Jamaica with uh, 200 years of British exploitation of slave pen- yeah. Dramas to show that. It's, it's not really being produced. What you're producing is Downton Abbey and upstairs, downstairs, yeah, romanticizing like, yeah, the English like, yeah. aristocratic. But in the film, TV, they are not really dealing a lot with that. Well, this is why I for fear, maybe for fear. Okay, the Americans yeah. are doing something with Roots when that came out mm-hmm. in the late 70s. Uh, but uh, the latest film, Lincoln, made by Steven Spielberg, that story is, is twisted. They have not got to the source of what... Uh, the Lincoln was only wanted peace with the southern state. He was not really a man driving for the emancipation of the slavery, but they're trying to twist it in the film. He was wanted peace with the southern states yes and it was of course an inconvenience the black man was enslaved mm-hmm. a woman uh, and there's so many things missing in that story i'm talking about the film production with steven spielberg you can read about that new african magazine with some uh, two or three months ago yeah. an issue where they talk about an analysis of that film mm-hmm. that there's so little actually revealing a that film is made behind, to satisfy yeah. the guilt of america well, is it's not there to explore the mm-hmm. truth about what happened because they should be focused on we, other characters got, we what? have to start bringing those films yeah, out. Yeah, it's you to, and me and yeah. other creative people yeah. uh, who write film scripts, mm-hmm. uh, uh, because if you write wait uh, novels. Yeah, we, we, we wait for Hollywood. It's yeah, never going to happen, is oh, it? Uh, that film is, Steven, is made to satisfy a popular American mm-hmm. or a global or, mm-hmm. or Steven Spielberg, the superhero. I like Steven Spielberg. But the focus on who really pushed for emancipation is not Lincoln. Mm-hmm. It's some other characters in the Congress at that time. And they are not given the proper place in that storyline. But then as well, also, the people in slavery, they were fighting as well. They were fighting to, to change things and to, 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 to be free as well. Oh, y- 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 yeah, in the, yeah, in the emancipation. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, the suffering is just yeah, indescribable they, in, in the America. <laughs> I mean, uh, even when Obama, of course, I cried the day Obama became president. This is a great thing for humanity. Now, Obama, of course, is trying to do his best because he's a politician. He has to play the, the game, political game in Washington like any other but but there's uh, but you know this kind of nationalistic talk of uh, yeah the, the great nation and this and that and that fact is Obama 1963 nearly half of the US state a black and white woman could not marry mm-hmm. when I was two years old half the US it would be illegal for my parents to be married in America it's totally illegal by law mm-hmm. 
and you say what is America built on slavery of the African man Absolutely. genocide of the red Indian man mm -hmm. and removal mm -hmm. and the and the exploitation of the European working classes those kind of things when in the, the nationalistic talk comes out never gets to the face and even Obama doesn't it's all this nationalistic patriotic talk fact is uh, uh, well, even Obama's history yeah, yeah yes, I mean uh, yeah. you are you are you are you are in power because you have a white American mother well they, they and where, where's <laughs> your where, yeah uh, mm. to, to, to bridge the, the get, but we have yes. to see stepping stones yeah. in history yeah that's it, that's it will be that's, very yeah. different when you see a, a full black person who's born into America. Maybe yeah, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> maybe maybe Oprah Winfrey. She, she's popular. No, but oh, she, fa she. fantastic things have happened in America. When you think about it, of all the places outside the African continent where mm -hmm. Afro Afro people mm -hmm. have really pushed the limits of creativity and, and success career-wise, it is America. They are much further ahead than Europe. They're, I mean, they're, I know there's lots of in the well, middle. No, but if you look at it, uh, police chiefs in America that are. That are just the black the black American economy yeah. in the United States is mm. one trillion dollars one trillion yeah. dollars if not if not two trillion dollars mm. a third of all cinema tickets sold in the United States are sold to African Americans because they go to the movies or more so Hollywood doesn't just sit there and sleep sleep these are facts mm. so no I'm, I'm talking about achievements incredible things have been achieved yeah. I mean Europe I mean, everything's organic it just takes time I mean my opinion we can complain and complain about England, but in my opinion, this is the best place for African people or Afro people in Europe of achievement okay, unto okay. this date. Everywhere else is developing too, mm -hmm. but all places in Europe, that's why I am here. Okay, so when were you, where you travelled from? What was the difference? Give us a yeah, I'm, I come from Denmark. No, Denmark is a... I know you've been to quite a few places as well. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean travelling? Mm -hmm. Well, I've... I've Travel a lot to Spain. Well, I've been, I've been, I've been to. I, I, I used to, I used to be a sports in athletics. So I was on the Danish national team, so I, I, I was, I went to Russia in the communist time, which I'm happy I saw Russia in 1983 during wow. the communist era. Yeah, I'm happy I, I saw what kind of reality it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I met fantastic, lovely people in Russia, uh, but I also saw. I went to Moscow in 1983. Dull, dull. Shops were empty. I went to Georgia on the same trip. You walked in, I've never in my life been to a place where I've had so much money in my pocket I couldn't use it. Because the shops were empty. You went to the supermarkets, there was nothing there. Okay, you went to a bar, you could buy a, you could buy a bottle of champagne for 50 pence. So a good place to party at that time. Goodness. And I met a lot of very lovely people in Russia. Mm -hmm. Yes, very, very lovely people. But the place was dull. You know, Moscow was high-rise buildings and... And we were we were given a freelance interpreter to travel around. He said he loved his job because he was only one of three or four people in Russia who was freelance. He used to travel with American basketball teams and everything. He was free, and he said he loved that freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, uh, it's it. Uh, there's nothing dramatic, except except that the place was just subdued. Uh, when I went, I went to southern Russia to, to Georgia, and what I saw down there was a culture that looks just like Turkey. Uh, the culture, Muslim culture, this is mm, on the Black Sea, mm, this kind of mm, thing. Mm, mm. But my impression of the Russian sports people, we met the whole national team there. No, it's okay. Very lovely people. Mm. Full stop. Lovely people. But it so wasn't the communist era. I was into athletics. I was on a triple jump. Oh, okay. So yeah, and through my sports, I traveled. Right. Yeah, I was right. only I was yeah. on the top for three or four years, and I quit one day. When I was 22, I quit. Mm -hmm. I, I I wanted to I wanted to be free, because I had to I had to work out all the time. My friends were always going to festivals and getting drunk and partying, mm -hmm. and I always had to get up the next morning and train, and could never party along. And I said, "This is enough. Is enough." And they were they were going on holidays. When they went on holidays to Italy and on the interrail, I had to go and train. I had great times. But when I was 22, I became Janie's champion, 1983. I stepped off the tra a daily champion and I stopped and never went back. Right. That's 30 years ago. Wow. But then again, when I look at it, if I, if I look at my, 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 my past, I, I'd much rather spend the whole youth dancing or playing music. But then again, you are the cards are given to you. How do you know about things unless you're given opportunities? Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have opportunities to, to do acting or drama or, or to go and dance, I mean, how would you know about it? That's what life. Not many people don't have opportunities. So, what sort of um, what sort of films would you like to 
um, or you, you know, would like to do in the future? Anything? Anything in the, in the yeah. pipeline? Or? You, you know what I <laughs> I see, I see working with uh, videos and art. Uh, yes, thing, I mean, it could be anything from music videos to, to dance. I've, I've done the dance videos too. Uh, I'm interested in documentary and I'm also hyper interested in fiction. I think, you know what? I'm really interested mm -hmm. at the root note of anything is, is, is poetic, spiritual oriented films. And that, of course, is just a generalized statement. But I am also hyper interested in science fiction. Just want to read this out for you. Great show, good guests, enough respect to both of you. That boy can play some tune, he says. <laughs> well, good. Uh, massive props to your Thanks guests. Thanks a always. lot. Love it. Um, it's from Ramesses. Thank, Thank you, you Ramesses. Ramesses, thank you very much for your heart and your, and your listening in. That's wonderful. Yes, so, um, would, you want, would you like to play? Sure, yes, sure. yes. okay. I we'll think, play you, I one think here. you should play. Okay, I'm just going to select here. And I'll so, tell you that I'll tell you the title what of. What can we expect from this one? What uh, is? This let is me a, just. Um, a sweet romantic uh, ballad. It's a oh, okay. very, very famous jazz ballad. So okay. let me try and I'll press the button now and see what happens. Yes, yeah, should I <coughs> turn around? Oh, you're all right there. Okay, uh, we're just. Okay, we're gonna we're yeah. going to start now. He's just uh, he's just getting himself sorted here. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're just um, he is he is getting it yeah, already. I'm the music's coming. And okay, what we'll do. Right. Okay, we're ready now. We're going for it right now. <laughs> <Yana>. <laughs> okay, come on, let's go.
<laughs> wow, very good. Love that. Love that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, right, thanks. Henry, I know you've got so much more you want to talk about and what have you, but we are down to our last seven minutes. So what I have to say to you is, um, what I normally do at this point um, is I'd like you to really just leave some gems, you know, words of wisdom, things that have have kind of been there, been good for you, that's helped you in your life. So just say, you know, just tell the, the listening audience, you know, just give them some motivational yeah, it's, um, uh, I mean, gems. So many interesting issues but, have been but, but, re- reflected but on. Keep within the times yeah. we yeah. Okay, what has transformed my life? And that's not just an overnight event. It's been a gradual evolution of my feelings, my heart, my personality, my path. And that, of course, has been the, the, the path of creativity. Uh, and that didn't just happen from one day to the next. It's been a gradual thing. As I said, I, I didn't start actually playing music until I was 25. I picked up the guitar when I was 25, I went to an art school and learned it there and then sat and thrashed for hours and hours and slowly that that took place but that's also based on an inkling in your heart that's yearning towards doing something like that. We all have dreams so time is moving and as we get older, I'm 52 now, time is moving, what you want to do you must implement. You plant the seeds and of course it can be discouraging because say okay if I pick up a guitar God, it doesn't sound good. Uh, it's never going to sound good. There's always defeatism in, along the, the path of life. But that's just part of it. Something in your heart will tr- keep on driving you. I mean, uh, spirituality is, is just there because that is the nature of the universe in ourselves. So a discovery of that is not just saying, oh, I'm going to suddenly become spiritual. That's also a gradual process. But I think things can accelerate them by maybe putting yourself into situations where 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 you you sort of throw yourself at something you have a premonition or an intuition about I would like to do. I mean basically for me, I mean the things you can control in life, they are your very very intimate things. It it's it's easy to pick up a music instrument. It's not too expensive to buy and start participating. It's also easy to go start going dancing. Go and have some fun. Yes. Move the body. Get the rhythm Woo. flowing. Dancing in itself is a totally musical thing that's endlessly fantastic. Uh, yoga, meditation. Mm-hmm. These are much easier things to throw yourself at than maybe starting to create some massive business plan where you have to be approved by a lot of things, people along your way. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can do that for building structures around your life. Mm-hmm. But what are the things that are really nurturing for you, that really satisfy? That's where you have to look. we all individual. I can't sit and talk for everybody else. But these are some universal things that I've seen in myself that it's an ongoing discovery. I am not sitting in my house totally gratified and thinking I'm the top of the world. I have hunger and a drive and also pain to wanting to manifest even more the things that I'm doing and actually get out mm. much more of my we music. We should never or, stop. We should never yeah, stop because, wanting Yeah, because I mean, when, 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 are you totally, when are you totally satisfied with what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. I have a divine sense of peace somewhere in myself which is not far away. I can, I can connect. Uh, and that has been developed through uh, the spirit coming to me giving directions but also through ad- adversary d- difficulties mm. sorrowful times yes. or yeah. economic problems mm-hmm. or frustration about what you're doing in your life these are all being elements that are being there to open up the heart to a path but mm-hmm. I'll tell you something choose creativity as an enormous healer yeah. and it's, it, it, you can do it on your own and you can share it with people to work with colors to work with sound and music to write a book write poetry Come on, folks, just create. Wow, thank you so much. Those are powerful words, and I'm sure, I'm sure the kings and queens, the listening audience, have heard that. I hope so too, and And, um, thank you very much. They're going to implement that. So we are wrapping up. We are going, um, and it's been an amazing, um, amazing evening um, with you. Um, Yes, I'm, I'm totally calm. I'm totally, you know, in my spirit. So. Just want to say thank you for coming along and sharing and, you know, doing this for for me, you know, really enjoy it. And I'm sure everybody has, as I've explained. Um, And want to thank our producer, radio owner. A a hand to the producer. Amazing, yes. 
I have to. I know he. Do, I know he, he, he sort of. But yeah, thank you so much. Um, so yes, we're going to go. I'm going to um, play you a song, um, really about believe in yourself. It's a it's a really lovely song. Just believe in yourself and just know that you can do anything, be anything, and have anything that you want. You are special. You're wonderful, and I love you. You're my spiritual family, and I'm going to see you next week. What I'd like to say next week, we're going. It's going to be me and you. Um, and we're going to do a goal setting. I'm going to attempt to do a goal setting workshop with you. Um, so please bring your pens, your papers. Please bring your, you know, your dreams and unwrap them. And out at the end of the sh- sh- at the end of the show, you will have nine goals, and you will be on your way to achieving them. And this is what I've used in my life to achieve some of the the things that are really important, really big for me. And I will go into that with you next week. So please come prepared with pens and papers. We're going to have a great time doing goal setting. Um, And yeah, so I'm going to play this song for you. And um, goodbye and see you next week. See you next week.